every horse for the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty how silver, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> His faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness have come down to us through the generations. And nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past and the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver, the Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! Let's go, big fellow! I'm Silver! The Lone Ranger and Dan Reed reached the top of a small hill on their way to join Tonto. Oh, Silver, oh boy. Oh, big oh. boy. As they reined up to study the valley to the west, they saw wisps of smoke curling from blackened objects in the distance. The masked man grew tense. Dan exclaimed, Golly, what happened? We'll find out, Dan. Come on, Silver! Get along, Captain. The charred remains of a half dozen heavy wagons gave mute evidence of an attack by Indians. The horses were gone, but the lifeless forms of guards and drivers lay where they'd been struck down by Comanche arrows. Oh, Silver! Oh, 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 steady, fellas. Easy, boy. Easy. The soldiers. Steady, big fellow. Yes, Dan. On the way to the stockade near Crawford's Pass. Well, we'll make sure they're all beyond help. <coughs> How do you know that's where they were going? There's no other place for them to go. The post at Crawford's Pass is the last outpost. It's at the edge of the hostile country. I I guess these soldiers are all dead. Yes, Dan. The Indians were thorough. All those dirty savages. If I was old enough to be a soldier... I'd like the chance to fight them. Come on, let's look at the wagons. What's left of them? At least we can find out what they held. Some of them are still smoldering. Food. Look at it. Gosh, what a mess. Completely destroyed. Yeah, let's look at the others. Come along, Silver. Get along, Victor. Golly, I hope Tano doesn't run into trouble with those savages. He can take care of himself. I guess all six of the wagons held food. Yeah, so it appears. I wonder why the Indians didn't steal it. Probably didn't need it, Dan. But then why did they attack the supply train? They didn't want this food to reach the outpost. Silver. Steady, boy. What's the matter with him? Look to the west, Dan. A horseman? He's coming this way. Don't you recognize him? The dust makes it hard. Why, it's Tano. All right, Silver, take it easy. But why is Tano coming here? I thought you told us to meet him. You told him to meet us at the campsite. He'll answer for himself when he joins us, don't worry. So you knew these troopers would be met and massacred, Antonio? Uh, me try to bring warning. Me too late. But how'd you know about it, Tano? Well, me meet Comanche. 
Him tell Tonto there are plenty trouble ahead for soldier. Soldiers have had trouble for the last six months. Those scattered bands of Comanches have killed almost every scout and hunter that went out from the stockade. And more trouble ahead. This massacre just part of plan. What do you mean, Toto? Well, Comanche want to capture stockade. Oh, golly. They must realize there isn't a chance. They have bows and arrows. The men in the stockade have rifles and cannon. Ah, uh, that's why Comanche want stockade. Them want rifle and cannon. But a handful of Comanches couldn't hold... Then, ho- many handful together make big number. Are all of the small bands combining? Not right. Golly. And there might be real trouble. All Indian go to powwow in hills. Indian leader make big plan. Leader plenty smart. Do you know the leader, Tonto? Ah, uh, him, Red Fox. Red Fox? That's right. Smartest of them all. I've heard about him. The army has set a dozen traps for him, and he's always escaped capture. So Red Fox is taking charge. Not right. Red Fox wants that stockade... He has men enough. But I you don't... said that the Comanches had only bows and arrows. There's another weapon, Dan. What's that? Look at those wagons. The food that was destroyed. The Red Fox is cutting off the food supply. He's making a weapon out of hunger. I wonder if that's his plan. Kimasabi, maybe me find out. How, Tano? Me go to Indian powwow. You, Tano? Uh, Tano, you think you could get away with it? I'll me try. You know where the Indians are meeting? Huh? Me know. Couldn't the soldiers attack them there? Indians scatter in hills, Dan. Soldier not get them. Go to the meeting, Toto. Dan and I will go to the camp where we originally planned to meet you. We'll wait there until we hear from you. Ah, uh, that's good. You'd better unsaddle and ride bareback like the other Indians. That's right. Here, I'll help you. So will I. <laughs> now, when you've learned something about Red Fox's plans, we'll take the information to the commandant at the stockade. Very scout, steady, fella. There, saddle. We'll take it to camp with us. Good luck to you, Kimasabi. We'll be waiting for you, Tonto. Uh, me, me come soon. Get him up, scout. <laughs> Well, you've been riding hard, Porter. Yeah, you know what happens to the scouts that don't ride hard. Listen, do you hear them war drums? I've been listening to them since sunset. Well, they mean trouble aplenty. Trouble for this stockade. Them Comanches are assembling in the hills. What? So that's it. And they've got Red Fox as a leader. Red Fox? Yeah. When one of the scouts brought word of the disaster that struck our food train, I thought of that troublemaker. As near as I could figure, he had about a hundred men around him. Yeah. Well, we might ride out and attack. Oh, you wouldn't find them, Captain. They're scattered in the hills. You're probably right. I wonder what kind of a trick Red Fox will play. Well, whatever it is, he'll have a lot of men. Those drums are bringing them together from all sides. The Comanche guard permitted Tonto to pass unchallenged. He found himself in a horde of dancing, chanting savages whose war paint gleamed in the light of many fires. Tonto saw Red Fox in the center of a dancing circle. Presently, the cunning leader donned a great headdress of eagle feathers. He stepped to the top of a rock and flourished a spear. His voice was sharp, high-pitched. His phrases were clipped. Comatu! So they saw us! Red Fox declared that the land belonged to the Indians. He called the soldiers interlopers and intruders. He decried the courage of the Indians, lashed them with well-chosen words for permitting the invasion of their rights. His listeners responded with increasing fervor. Then suddenly... As Red Fox clutched his spear with both hands and held it high over his head, the dancing and chanting stopped. For several seconds, there was no sound other than the crackling of the fires. Every Indian stood silent, waiting, waiting for the next words from Red Fox. Even the horses seemed tense, as if they too had been brought under the spell of a leader. Then, Red Fox spoke in a different tone. Say, 
Tonto understood enough of that dialect to know the grim importance of the speech. Red Fox told the new arrivals what had already been done to hurt the soldiers. Then he outlined his plans for a final coup that would wipe out the gallant outpost. Dan Reed wakened in the woodland camp at daybreak. He saw that Tonto had arrived and sat talking to the Lone Ranger. Indian make many attack on stockade. And the attacks were turned back. Ah, Aaron no good against stockade. That's why Red Fox try new plan. Tonto, if you're right in what you've told me, the Indians are not planning to starve out the soldiers. No. Cutting off the food was merely a preliminary move in Red Fox's plan. That's right. Red Fox do that so soldier talk peace. The soldiers will always honor a flag of truce. Ah, Red Fox know that. Did you say that the Indians... Oh, you wake, Dan? Yes. Did you say that the Indians are going to make peace? No, Dan. The Indians are not going to make peace. They're going to try to wipe out the entire garrison in one swift move. Oh, golly. Pack up the blankets and saddle up. Are we breaking camp? As quickly as possible. You go tell, soldier, what Red Fox planned? Yes. Yes, I have my... We must try to do more than merely warn the soldiers. We may need all the time we can get. But after we warn them, what else can be done? I don't know yet, Dan. Be sober. The soldiers know that Red Fox plans to violate a flag of truce. They refuse to honor the white flag. Well, won't that spoil Red Fox's plan? Spoil his present plan. Oh. They'll simply postpone the end. Red Fox will try something else. If that fails, he'll have another scheme to wipe out that garrison. Uh, that's right. Best the soldiers face starvation. <laughs> We're going to try to turn Red Fox's plan against him. Captain Rogers was with the chief of the hunters and scouts. And you think it's hopeless, huh, Porter? It sure is, Captain Rogers. Them redskins have driven off all the game. Yeah, trying to starve us out, eh? Hey, what's going on outside my quarters? I'll take a look and see, Captain. Captain Rogers, sir. Yes, what is it? A what's masked going on? man. What? And a redskin. Huh? And a boy. That masked man insists on seeing you personally, sir. Now, hold on. You have to wait. There's two little There he is. Uh, he can't come in here like this. I tried to stop him, Captain. Captain Rogers. I've got you covered, Mr. Quiet, Mr. Porter, quiet. I brought news of Red Fox. Wouldn't wait a second. Now, quiet know. down there, quiet. Who are you, sir? It's my message that's important. Remove that mask. I'll hand you one of my guns instead. Here. Please examine the cartridges. Take the pistol, Meade. Yes, sir. Mighty fine gun. Uh, You'll see. do as I ask. It may help. Open it, Meade. Let me see the cartridges. Well, here they are. And here's the gun. Hey, look at those shells. Let me see. Those ain't brass. Masked man's got Wait, wait a minute. Are these made of silver? Yes, Captain. I see. Porter, close that door. Yes, Captain. I shall be keenly interested in whatever you have to say. Uh, me too. But the mask. Uh, shut up, blockhead. Red Fox is planning to attack with men to outnumber you ten to one. The odds won't matter. It's weapons that count. We have rifles and cannon against arrows and spears. Red Fox is counting on strategy and deceit. Now, most of his men will be concealed in the woods. He'll come forward with a small group carrying a flag of truce. Indeed. As soon as he's inside the stockade, he'll signal those with him. They'll have knives, war clubs, and tomahawks beneath their blankets. So attack us? Indeed. In the confusion, the gates will be thrown wide open for all the Indians to rush in. Now, that's his plan. You might refuse to admit the Indians. No, that would merely postpone the fight. Exactly. I see little hope. We must fight a suicidal battle or or choose the slower but nonetheless certain end, starvation. Captain Rogers, there is a way to defeat Red Fox. How? You can defeat him by giving him exactly what he's after. What you say? Why, what in blazes do you mean? The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue our story. Dan and Tonto, waiting with the horses outside the captain's office, were aware of the suspicious glances that were cast by the troopers. As an hour passed, it became increasingly uneasy. They've been talking an awful long time, Tonto. That's right. Maybe the captain wouldn't listen to the Lone Ranger. Maybe he's placed him under arrest. Do you think anything's gone wrong? I mean, not know, Dan. Maybe they've unmasked him. Maybe they're trying to find out who he wait, is. Wait, wait. He hears steps close to the door. Maybe him come. Well, that's risky. Downright dangerous. We gotta take chances. What else is there? Good plan, Meade. I reckon so, Captain. Meade, pass the word to the bugler. Yes, sir, right away. And, uh... Hey, you, yes, sir? See that's that my right gear's made ready. I wonder where the Lone Ranger right is. You, uh, Dan Reed? Yes, Captain Rogers. You, uh, Tonto? That's right. Wasn't our friend in that office with you? He's gone up the ladder you see in there. He's going to inspect our observation tower. He'll be here presently. Oh. Well, this is our chief scout, Mr. Porter. I'm glad to meet up with you two. Glad to know you, Mr. Porter. Hey, reckon I'm going to work with your friend that wears the mask. Not good. Here he comes now. A tower will do nicely, Captain Rogers. Good. I'm glad to hear it. When I get up there, I'll pull the ladder up. I still think I'm the one who should remain here. Your place is with your men, Captain. The bugle. There's assembly. Yes, I must go and address the men. We'll go and listen to you. Come, Dan. Yes, sir. Bring the horses. The arrival of the masked man and the subsequent conference behind closed doors had aroused the curiosity of the troopers. The unexpected call for assembly brought wonderment to their faces and countless questions to their lips as they fell into line. Attention! The captain stepped forward. All right, men. At ease. Men, our food is low. Our sources of supply have been cut off. As long as we stay inside the fort, we can stand off the Indians. We cannot, however... Combat starvation. A large band led by Red Fox is sneaking into the woods beyond the north gate. They'll move on us in the morning. Between now and sunrise, we're going to leave by the south gate. We shall go in small units, taking horses, cannon, ammunition, and what food we have. Now, this move must be made secretly. Tension! Count off in fours. Count off! The movement of the troops was concealed by darkness and a mist that rose from the ground. All sounds were muffled as groups of four left through the south gate and headed for a nearby gulch that was large enough to conceal the cannon as well as the men and horses. Through the long hours of the night, four pairs of eyes watched from the observation tower. Four more have just left. How about the group ahead? I guess they've reached the gulch, but the fog's hidden them. How is it on the west, Porter? Quiet as far as I can see. How about the woods to the north, Toto? Plenty quiet. Indian not like to move in dark when ground covered by fog. Indian think fog, plenty evil spirit. Hello up there in the tower. Yes, Captain Rogers? Most of the men have left. I'm ready. Thanks. Dan will be right down. Dan, here to go with Captain Rogers. But I thought that I was going to Before stay... Or you go to the gulch with the captain. Take Scouts and Silver out of the gate. Leave them at ground hitch directly beneath this tower. All right. Okay, the tower's over the north wall. We can reach the horses by going down a rope. I'll join you later, Dan. I'll get going. Watch your step on that ladder. I am. Don't forget about Scout and Silver. I won't. Well, we'd better get over to the lookout post on the north wall. It'll soon be daybreak. Yeah. Red Fox comes soon after daybreak. We'll be ready for him. Just three men remained inside the garrison. Daybreak found them at the north wall. Tonto and the Lone Ranger stood on the ground near the gate. Next to them, Porter stood on a guard's platform, peering over the top of the stockade. Presently, he called. They're coming. Get to the porthole, Tonto. Ah. Ten of them. That one in lead is Red Fox. Oh, the ornery critters. Red Fox is carrying that flag of truce just like he meant it. Notice that each of the Indians has a blanket around his shoulders. Ah, uh, and blanket hide weapon. They've come close enough. Call to them, Porter. Right. Stand by you. Is that a flag of surrender or a flag of truce? He comes to make peace. You know what to say, Porter. 
You want to come inside the garrison? Ah, uh, that's right. You open the gate. How about it? Ask if they are unarmed. Red Fox, you listen to me. He listen. Do you guarantee you ain't bringing weapons? Ah, uh, no weapons. How about the men with you? All us here to make peace, not got weapons. Tell them we'll open the gate for one man at a time. They'll dismount and come in leading their horses. Hi, Sammy. Come this way, Tonto. Ah. Dismount and come through the gate one at a time. All right, slide the bolt. He got it bad. Porter, tell Red Fox to come in first. Right. You first, Red Fox. Now come over here with us. Be right with you. Give me a hand, Tonto. Open it a little. Uh-huh. 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 They're coming, one at a time, like they was told. We're ready. Uh, here's Red Fox. That's far enough. Stand where you are, Red Fox. Take that blanket, Tonto. Ah, uh, me take it. Hold it. Hold it. One word of warning and I'll fire. Why, well, look at the critter. Knife in one hand, a war club in the other. You not Well, that's your idea you. of a flag of truce, huh? I'll take those weapons. There. I'll stand over there and keep quiet. Uh, don't get over there. Now, Porter, let the rest of them come in, one at a time. We'll disarm them as they enter. And I'll bet we find a weapon under every blanket, the treacherous varmints. <laughs> One at a time, the Indian stepped through the narrow opening in the gate. As each one came in, his blanket was snatched from his shoulders. Man, make a sound and you'll get wrapped on the roof. Go down that knife and stand next to Red Fox. When the last Indian was inside, the gate was closed. Red Fox and his group were silent and resentful as they stood in a line, glaring hatred at the masked man. We know your plans, Red Fox. You brought these men to create a disturbance. You expected them to leap at the nearest soldiers and sustain a hand-to-hand struggle while you threw that gate wide open. Your signal would bring hundreds of Indians from the woods. No Indian in woods. Me come talk peace. That's easily disproved. Take his eagle bonnet, Tonto. Put it on your own head. Uh, he got it. Get your guns out, Porter. I got them in half a dozen spares, all loaded. Start firing as fast as you can. I'll join you as soon as the gate's wide open. Uh, me help with the gate. Should I start now? Yes, and a few shouts won't hurt. <laughs> Let the Indians in the woods see that headdress, Tonto. Ha! Uh, empty it. Now give a war cry like Red Fox. Wave your arms. <laughs> Yell your head off, Red Fox. Your friends can't hear you. They're shouting too loudly themselves. As the painted savages charged toward the wide open gate, the Lone Ranger signaled Tonto and Porter. The Indian surged through the north gate as Porter leaped to his horse and dashed out of the stockade through the south gate. Meanwhile, the masked man and Tonto went into the captain's quarters. They slammed the door and bullet. Up that ladder, Tonto. Uh, Up you go. I'm right behind you. It took but a moment to reach the platform in the small tower with openings on all four sides. I'll take care of the ladder, Tonto. Uh, Look out the south window. See if our horses are on hand. Uh, horses right under window. Are the ropes ready to slide down? Uh, them here. All what right. about Porter? See him? Him ride plenty fast. Him nearly to Arroyo. And the soldiers will be on the move. Indian try smash the door. I'll get their attention and speak from the window. Watch out for error. I shall. This will get their attention. Error. It's Red Fox. All of you, listen to me. Error. Someone shoot. No more of that. We'll use guns on you. Red Fox has led you into a trap. You are here without food. The soldiers and the guns you wanted are gone. Air Pucco. That signal, Captain Reddy. Hear that? The soldiers are outside. Your arrows cannot reach them. But their weapons can kill you if you try to leave. So you can't leave. If you remain, hunger will conquer you. Now, when you are ready to make real terms for peace, put the signal in this tower. Now, Tonto, get down the rope. We'll join the troopers. Ah. Sealed by the stockade, the masked man and Tonto reached their horses. Steady! Come on, fellow! Dan 
Dan Reed, Porter, the captain of the troopers, and the Aurora watched the oncoming horses. Stand ready at that cannon. The Indians will open the south gate in a moment. They're doing it right now, Captain. Show them their mistake. Drop a shot there. Fire! Oh, sir. Oh, boy. That goes the back. They've closed the south gate. What about the north gate? You heard the bugle? Yes, Captain. That was the signal. Detachments with cannon have taken post to cover all the gates. This one of them? That was the law. We got him, Captain Rogers. We got him trapped. I think you'll find it easier to get food than they will. We can get it now. The hunters will get plenty now that the Redskins won't be able to massacre him. You, sir, have saved this garrison. You may have to stay in this gulch for some time, Captain. Now, the Indians may be slow to surrender. Just a moment. Something is going on in that tower. May I borrow those binoculars? Here. What is it? It looks like fight. Golly. It's Red Fox. He and two others are... I... They're lifting him up. What are they doing to him? Look, someone was... Oh, golly! Thrown out of the tower. <laughs> Did you have the binoculars on him? Yes. Was it Red Fox that went out? One of the Indians killed him first. Uh, ah, Indian learn him follow wrong leader. Wait. Uh, here, take the binoculars. Is something else going on in the tower? Captain Rogers, you look. You'll like what you see. Why, a flag of surrender. Hey, Ginger. That's what it is. But do they mean it? They mean it. They done for Red Fox in full view of all of us. So we'd know that they meant this white flag. <laughs> by Juniper, this is the first time I ever see anyone lick the Redskins by giving them what they wanted. <laughs> I'm The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. Mm-hmm.